Digital Technology GCSE. The teachers that will be taking this course will be Mrs Lloyd Davis, Miss Walters and Miss Oram. This is a brand new qualification that has taken over from the ICT. So ICT is very old school now and we don't tend to use when we're in businesses and a lot of companies tend to use online versions of products. A lot of advertising is done online on websites and very popular these days are the production of websites, of games, of apps, and lots of other social media features. So these are the crux of what the new course is about. So why should you choose the WJC GCSE in Digital Technology? This qualification is to help you broaden your knowledge about the understanding of digital skills, websites, social media, uh, in both school and everyday life. So that's when you're creating a business or working for a business, it will help you to understand how businesses work these days. The qualification will allow you to develop your understanding of the range of digital systems used in our connected and globalised society. So what will you study? Well, there are three units in total. The first unit is the theory unit. Okay, so it's the, called the digital world and it's an on-screen examination and it's worth 40% of the final outcome. You will start learning about the different theory aspects when you're in year nine, but the examination won't be until year 10. So you'll be refreshing your memory from some of the units that you've done in year nine, again in year 10 and doing lots of exam practice. Six areas of study, you've got data, digital technology systems, digital communications, impact of digital systems on organizations and individuals, securing data and systems, and change in digital technologies. All our theory work is completed on Teams and a full list of the topics you can see below. Everything is hosted on Class Notebook so that if you need to, you can work at home if you're isolated on the theory aspects. And we've got lots of topics. We've got how images are made, sounds, We've got magnetic storage drives, we've got the internet, we've got how networks are created, and we've got things like the system development lifecycle and types of network. Right, so there's lots of really interesting theory topics that we will go through, and that is worth 40% of your qualification. For unit two, digital practices is a non-examination assessment. You will have approximately 45 hours to complete the whole 40% and that will all be done in class time. So it means that it's a controlled exam, you'll have a controlled exam folder and you'll have units consisting of interrogating spreadsheet data, data and informed digital products and that gets broken into data organisation, data analytics, planning digital products, developing digital products and evaluating digital products. Now, what does that mean? There's different stages. On the right, I've got some thumbnails for you. The first thing you'll have is a set of data in a text file that you'll need to import into Excel. Now, that data has been programmed to be full of errors. So the first thing you'll need to do is clean the data. So it could be that there's duplicate records. There might be data that's missing. There might be data that has spaces in. There might be data that you need to make into uppercase so that it looks more organized. You might need to trim some data and once you've cleaned that data and removed all the errors you can see stage three which is analyze the data to make decisions. Now this data comes from a questionnaire and that questionnaire is people's opinions on what kind of games that they like, what kind of topics do they like, how they, how many hours they play gaming, uh, how they use the, um, the navigation controls and you will need to analyze that data to come out with some results. For example, you want to create a game that hits your target audience in the best particular way. So you want to target the correct age range, you want to target the correct uh, gender, you want to target the correct topic of choice for the majority of the people who you are creating a game for. So you will then analyze all your data to come out with some results and you will make some graphs and you will write about those results to make a decision. Once you've come out with your decision, you will then create a game on Game Maker. So your game 
will be based on what you've said your results are. So you will target the age that you have specifically said you're going to target and you will create every aspect of the game. So that's every single background, every single wall, every single sprite, and that's a character. Every single enemy, you will program it so that it increases a um, number of levels and this gets more complex in each single level. You will have uh, failure screens, you'll have win screens, you'll have count tallies to say how many lives you've got and how many you've lost, and a score. So every time you collect different objects, you will then keep adding to your score. Once you've finished your game and you've tested your game, you will need to then create a website on Dreamweaver software where all of the evidence that you have created, all the products you've created, will need to be stored for the moderator so they have easy access. And you will need to evaluate every product that you've created to say whether you like your product, whether you don't, what you do differently, what went wrong, what went right. Then in unit three, this is communicating in the digital world and it's worth 20% of your final outcome. You'll be studying unit three in year 10 and it consists of social media and online marketing communications, creating digital assets and planning digital communications. So the areas of study, you will do some research on forms of online marketing and communications. So how do people advertise online? What is the best way for them to advertise online? And then what's the impact? So what is the most productive way? Um, how many extra viewers do you get? Once you've done some research into the types of advertising and then the impact of that online marketing, you will then start to create some digital assets. And by digital assets, we mean creating a video advert, um, animations. And then you'll go on to plan digital communications and evaluate completed digital products. OK, so this is an example that has come from the WJC. Glimbool is an advertising company that specializes in digital market on social media. The company has seen a rise in the use of videos on the following social media platforms, Snapchat, Facebook, Instagram and Twitter, and would like you to make the most of the digital assets they have provided to make a video that will promote their new product. Promote their new client. Glimbool's new client is a record company who would like to create a recruitment advertisement to attract new singers to one of their auditions. The record company would like to emphasise the need to be an all-round performer in the advert. The record company wants to reach as wide an audience as possible. So you will need to design a video advert that meets the needs of the chosen audience and marketing strategy. So you will define a marketing campaign that has a clear purpose, target audience and house style. So you will need to decide what the purpose is of that video that you're creating is. Who is your target audience? Well, they've said they want as wide as audience as possible. They won't want you to have just a particular age. They want you to target everybody. So you're going to have to do some research. Once you've created your video and you think that it's got a clear purpose, that it advertises for the specific task that has been asked for you in your uh, example, then you will need to evaluate your asset. So how well did the digital asset meet your objectives? Did it hit the correct target audience? Did it hit the correct gender? Has it got um, a house style? And you can refer back to your refinement log. So the refinement log is what you're going to create to show how you've created things, what research you've done, how you've made changes based on feedback. All right, so what the successful features of the digital asset are, so that's what you think or what feedback you get from other people and some suggestions for future improvements in the digital asset. So that's things like what went wrong and how you would change it if you did it again. So how are you going to be assessed? OK, so unit one is an on-screen examination you will take at the end of year 10. It's an hour and a half long and worth 80 marks. It's worth 40%. The unit two is a non-examination assessment. It's 45 hours long, approximately. It can change, it could be less, and it could be more if you need it. Again, it's 80 marks, and it's 40% of the course. The unit three is a non-examination assessment that you will complete in year 10, and it's 15 hours long, it's worth 60 marks, and it's worth 20%. 
Now this course is a linear course and what that means is it's not split into units specifically. Everything has to be entered at the same time at the end of a two year period. So that means that your whole course will be finished at the end of year 10. So the year nine pathway, you'll be doing the unit two and you'll be doing part of the unit one, which is the theory. So in year 10, you will complete the theory, which is unit one, and you will complete the unit three, which is the non-examination assessment. If you want to have a look at some of the products that you could create, if you go to our YouTube channel, ICT, Computer Science and Digitech, and have a look at the GCSE Digitech Unit 2 playlists, and there's interrogating spreadsheets, the Maze Game Maker, and the Hierarchical website, if you have any further questions, please contact your teacher and we look forward to seeing you and hearing from you.